movies where they just say we're going to take the story arc, fuck, fuck the you know DCU EU and the Marvel universe and all that stuff. Let's just make this story arc. Let's just do it and and make it well hmm. and not have to think too hard. Yeah, because the material be the is it. already there. Because do you think I think that's where they where we are before like where we are currently with comic movies is just it gets very convoluted and you don't. It's a lot. You have to remember a lot that has happened from the past. You know the the, the three other movies that came out for the for the Marvel universe. You know, or because everything's interconnected and interwoven in a way. You know, now it's just it gets a little like overwhelming at some point when you're trying to like watch the movie and you're like, how did how did this person get here? You know, how does this connect here? And you're trying to think about that rather than enjoying the movie. It's yourself and actually being involved in the movie and really paying attention. To the so movie. I think back to your original like question too, a major way that comics have changed just throughout since the beginning inception of comics it's been like this these expanded universes that comics have created are so intense like yeah flashpoint in dc and like understanding how flashpoint affects comics today is still you know a thing um understanding how like infinite crisis that happened like in the 90s affects comics today like there's there's so much that builds on itself that even during a relaunch like other things can come up like right now the Watchmen are starting to enter the DC universe. Oh, they are. Yeah, and Batman. Like in comic form. Batman or? and Flash just found the Watchmen button, the button that Rorschach wore, and they're realizing that Doctor Manhattan from the Watchmen has now like created a breach between the two universes, and they're starting to like face off against each other. What? So like comics like are Crazy. so uninhibited by like. Like, they just don't give a fuck. If you've read the other ones or not, it's like, hey, this is what we're doing. We're telling a really cool story. And for those people who are lucky enough to have been on that ride since the beginning, their minds are being blown, like, every week because they're, there's no rails. There's yeah, no yeah. rails to comic storytelling. Like, it's if they have a bad issue, they're like, ah, fuck it, whatever. We had a bad issue. We, we release this every month. It doesn't really matter. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more risky with a movie, though. For sure. You're spending bajillion, bajillion, bajillions on a story where you're spending, you know, I don't know. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. That's probably not. Who knows? I don't know how much it costs to produce a comic, but much less yeah. for sure. They definitely need to. I, I actually, when I was off for a week, because I did, I started a new job as well. Um, I watched The Killing Joke. And that was my first time, like, actually, besides watching Batman when, when, when I was younger, watching a cartoon or whatever like that, an animated movie, and really getting into it. And I rented another Batman movie. I can't remember another animated movie. Nice. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. They're good. Now. They're doing No, good they're, they're very, very good. So it's really cool. All right, next topic, buddy. Well, I don't know how much do time, we have time do we got. Yeah, I want to do my me. game, so I want to know do we want to do other yeah, topics. My topic was donated by Wyatt, so I want to play his game. <laughs> so maybe let's skip to your topic, Brogan. See how much time we have left, and then go from there. Yeah, fuck my topic. Let's just do Wyatt's game. We are running low on time. Let's just do it. All right, sorry guys. <laughs> All right, guys. No, that was a good topic. That was yeah. fun. So I want to. I'm debating on whether I should tell you what this goal is. But I'm going to ask you a series of events or a series of scenarios. And I want to get you guys to give me what you would do in these scenarios. And in the end, I will judge who here would be the best starship captain. Great. Oh, man. Okay. okay. I want to say it. And I'm going to judge. I'm not even going to tell you what I'm looking for. I just want to hear your answers. I think it's important that we give you our gut reaction. Yeah. We're not trying to... Make There's our no right or wrong answer. I feel like I'm at a disadvantage because these two have probably done job interviews lately. No, these aren't job interviews. <laughs> I'm just going to ask starship you. starship captain. I'm going to ask you if you were kind of like the Kobayashi Maru, which you don't know what that is, but if you were in this scenario, passable test. what would you do to try? What, what do you okay. believe is, is the best scenario to solve this problem? Okay, I'm right. And I, there's no right or wrong answer, and I'm going to judge who you guys are. So there's three scenarios. I'm going to start with the first one, and I'm going to go around, and you just tell me what you would do. All right, first scenario. You're in a starship exploring the galaxy, and you hear a mayday, right? And so... Like you, a, from the ship, or...? Yes, from another ship. Oh. You hear a mayday, and you go over to the other ship, and you see that it's on fire, and it's about to explode. And you realize that there's 50 people on board. So you teleport those 50 people onto your, board, onto your ship to save them, and as soon as you do that, their ship explodes. And this is another alien race that you've never met before. And you offer, you ask, the, you, you save everybody on there. So you talk to the captain of the ship, and he says, hey, we're a transport ship. We're transporting, transporting these people to our home planet. Can you help us do that? And you say, sure. One rule is that you're now on my ship. I am the captain, and you have to abide by my rules, and I'm in charge. I am the captain now. <laughs> Correct. Right? You, and your captain says, okay, that's fine. 
what I'm doing is I'm carrying 30 prisoners back home. These are prisoners. These are hardened criminals. And I'm carrying them back home. Can you help me set them up in jail cells? And you say, sure. So you set them up in jail cells. You say you're in charge. And you're going to take them home and deliver them to their own people. Later, though, you find out that these criminals are, uh, you know, anywhere from adults to minors, from theft to murder, to small trespassing all the way. And you find out that their policy is you are guilty till proven innocent. And if you are guilty, you are sentenced to death. Right? And you find that out about these people. So these people, no matter what their crime is, they're sentenced to death and their children if six years guilty, old, right? but it's guilty till you're proven innocent. And these people all have been found guilty. All right? So some of these people could be innocent, but they weren't able to prove it. What do you do? Who would like to go first? This, I'll go first. This does feel like it was probably a Deep Space Nine episode. True or false? It was not. Okay. Could have been. Could have been. Um, I think what I would do is, since I am now the captain and we have laid the ground rules that while you're on my ship, it is my rules, um, I would open up a... Uh, a formal trial for each one of these people, depending on, you know, if we had the time to do it, I'm sure we do. Space travel is not a short term thing. Um, I would want to hear why those people have been sentenced to death. I know what you're thinking. I know that is it any of my business. It's these people's culture that I'm shitting on. But at the same time, I, as a captain took an oath to protect the species of the universe uh, at any cost. So I need to at least say that I did my part. So I don't just, close my eyes and blindly sentence people to death um you know and maybe the majority of them are guilty and do deserve to die but maybe some of them don't and it's it's worth trying to figure that out all right buddy or bluff (laughs) (laughs) it's not rocket science i'm gonna ask you two more yeah okay Actually, I like, well, Brogan went first, so that's probably easy to say this, but I I like Brogan's approach to judge them, because I feel like I would have a hard time just saying, hey, knowing that, basically leading people to their death that they could have been innocent. So I feel like I would judge it, too. I don't know how I'd do that. I think that'd be really hard to do if you're on the confines of a ship and you don't know any of their history and they're like an alien race, but I would try my best to help. Yeah, I, I I think we were all on the same page. I would agree with Buddy and Brogan. I would do more of a vetting process and, and giving them a trial and really di- diving in deep and having a, a, a better understanding of what happened and what why are they in this predicament. Maybe maybe they, they stole something to, to feed their family. You don't know that. You know you don't know the whole story. So I would want to interview the inmates and understand what happened from their perspective and also happened from the captain's perspective what he knows. So I'll do I'll do a vetting process that way and also have a trial um, conducted obviously by me and, and other surrounding elites of the ship, um, and then make my final verdict on if they live or die. And it'd probably be more a humane way of dying, just sending them out to space. <laughs> okay. Second scenario. You are traveling through the stars, and you come across another planet. And they are not as advanced as you. They don't have the ability to go warp speed and and, and soar the galaxy. But they are aware of other civilizations out there. They are friendly. They do reach out to you, and they say, hey, come visit our planet. You then visit their planet, and you find out that their planet actually has two species on it. They have the main species, just like like humans, and they take up 80% of the world. And then you find out that they are suffering from a disease. Humans are? The main population, the main species are suffering from a disease, and they can't figure out a cure. You also find out that there's another uh, species on there, kind of similar to Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, different species but very advanced. They are a tribal race that live on uh, a continent the size of Australia, and they live there by themselves, and they're a tribal species but they are just, you know, hunters and gatherers, okay, and they're solo. And they live in harmony with the other species who's very advanced, or at least way more advanced, similar to us and some tribes in, in Africa and stuff like that. Um, but very way more advanced. They're not suffering at all. They're thriving, but they can't leave that island because they, just, they just live there. Uh, so then they've, you've been asked to find a cure. You start studying it, and you find out that it's not a disease at all. It's genetic. 
And genetically, this species is dying out, the main species of the planet. But you also find a cure for it. You find a way to fix it. Do you give the cure to these people or no? Hmm. Yes. Wait, what was the second species there for? There's, there's they're just two. there's just two species that live on there. One is not suffering. One is oh, one, one is, is one is a very small tribal species that lives on an island, and the rest of the world is taken or is just dominated by the main species who's suffering from a genetic disease that you have the cure for. Mm-hmm. Do you do you, ha- do you have an understanding of why they are suffering from this disease? Like you, it's genetic. Well, I understand that. So like genetic, like how? Like is this because? It's been passed down fully, or it's just been mutated. Yeah, it's been in, in there. It's been in there. It's been in the species for generations, and it's just slowly getting worse as generations go by. What's the relationship between these two tribes again? Are they peaceful? Or yeah, they... they're peaceful. They just live separately. They just live separately. They don't. They don't. They just. They so, know each other's there, and they're just like. There's no there. imminent threat of this disease on the population as a whole. No, other it's than not this a disease. Tribe. It's a Sorry, genetic, genetic disorder. disorder. So, is there? So, from the the second the second species. Can can they get this? Can they get this disease in any way? No. If they cross genetic disorder, I know, I don't know. If they crossbreed, does that cancel out the genetic? Di- they genetic? don't crossbreed. They don't crossbreed. They just leave each other alone. I don't see. I I don't see why I would not give them the cure in that case. I would have a hard time not helping people if I have a cure in my hand. I knew these people were going to die out. I don't see why I would not give them the cure. Does it? I'd not see any downside to that besides that you're just kind of changing what might have been but, but i don't does that does that have an effect on any in, on any like timeline in, in in that realm i mean how you do don't that? know that could have been the timeline you just made it well i know i understand that but then so just like so like if you go back in time shoot hitler in the head like that's going to change the course of history so like this is the here and now this here is your now. decision okay. that you're yeah. making right here well, and now i definitely would hmm. put me down for yes it, it would. I, I would want to, but if it's just a genetic thing and it's like happening, like I don't. I don't know if it's my call to be like. I don't know. I'm, and again, it would probably. It would be really shitty to say to be like I want to make sure like the the good people are getting this and not the criminals of the species. So it's like it's a toss up because it's like you're dealing with different archetypes of people, you know, and you don't know who's good or who's bad in that that certain species. So just to save all of them and be like. Well, here you go. Then, then the people you do save. What if like thirty percent of them are bad and they kill the like the other the people that that do survive? So then that's there's seventy percent that were good. What? Yeah, yeah but if there's thirty percent that are bad. Because he said 80%, 80, 80, are 80 percent is one species, right? This planet's very peaceful planet. Yeah, it's they're just super one. Bad. They're just one, hanging out. Yeah, one. So like species, no, there's no like there's no animosity between the two species. I'm not just one species, dominates the planet because like, they own more of the planet, while the other one just lives peacefully on their own. No, I'm not, I'm not saying like it's like Africa. we have cats. Like people have cats as pets. In, what if the cats? Were, would you save the cats, Bluff? I'm saying inside cats. They're not less. Are you they're not to talk. They're not evolutionary. <laughs> like they're they're still intelligent people. They're just tribes people. That's all they are. I'll, I think you're missing the point. I'm just saying that. I'm not saying the the second species is going to take over the first species. I'm saying the first species, so everybody's just nice to each other from the first species. No one, there's no evil people. There's not bad people. Oh yeah, but how are you going to know who's? That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, so I don't know how you would figure that out. Who am I going to save and who am I not going to save? Am I going to save everybody? No, you're going to give the cure to the. You're you're deciding if the twenty percent is going to die out or not. No, you're not. You're just deciding whether you're going to give a cure to the people with genetic disorder. That's all you're deciding. I'm just telling you the sociology of this planet. I know. So, like, are you? Are you? So you're only deciding just to give the cure. You're not. You're not saying how how it gets divvied out, right? No, you're giving the cure to the. Okay, the, yeah, the, I would totally do that then. I'm just trying to get more information. Okay. No, ask. Love doing due diligence. <laughs> Yay! All right, guys. Final question, <laughs> and I'll tell you that. Uh, I'll give you who's, who should be the captain. Are you like reading this off a of BuzzFeed or what? No, uh, <laughs> these are BuzzFeed. <laughs> I'm not reading them off anything. Okay. All yeah, right, so. You are you and your ship, uh, your exploration ship, decide to go to a planet that you are you know, you you know exists. You know they exist, but you're not super. You know you don't know them very well. And you find out it's a paradise planet. It's uh, tropical, beaches everywhere. It's just a big resort, right? 
Beaches and everywhere. Sandals. Sandals. It's the giant. Yeah, the planet's called Sandals, right? It's a humanoid species, and they're. The they're. Sandals.